There we go. Sorry about that. Great. If that's the case, we're recording now and we're pretty much all here, then I will call the meeting to order at uh, 4.03 p.m. And uh, the uh, first, uh, we will do the opening remarks. Um, so I would uh, advise that uh, the notice of live stream. So we are um, reminded that we are now recording the meeting and it is being live streamed to the public on YouTube. Uh, the location of our recordings uh, is uh, obviously due to uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the board members are each in their respective home or places of work uh, for the duration of this meeting. And uh, so I would welcome all guests and viewers to this uh, uh, HR and Compensation Committee meeting today. And uh, we thank anybody that has taken the time to join us and to follow our meeting. Uh, next item, I'd like to uh, make the land acknowledgement. And uh, so on behalf of our board, we would like to acknowledge the traditional land which we are virtually gathered is Treaty 6. We would like to thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as the Cree, the Dene, the Salto, the Nakota Sioux, and the Blackfoot peoples. Uh, we also acknowledge this as the Métis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. And it is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton Metropolitan region as home. And uh, I would then uh, suggest, uh, looks like uh, we need to do an adoption of the uh, agenda, but we've got a couple of additions. And then I would, with those additions, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as, as amended. Uh, so, um, uh, Councillor um, Broadhead, you had an addition you wanted to bring forward? I would, sir. I would like to add uh, the format of the uh, July 2021 uh, EMTSC board meeting, um, a discussion around whether uh, a virtual meeting is still required uh, given the limitations of the board uh, chambers at the EMTSC office. So if we can have a quick discussion around that, uh, our CEO will uh, walk us through the, uh, the issues there. And I would add that as new item four. And we also um, are going to uh, add an in-camera uh, session uh, as item number five. And so we will adjourn to an in-camera session after we've finished regular business, including the, the new addition. Uh, any other uh, comments, Mr. Jankowski? Anything else that we need uh, before we entertain a motion to uh, adopt the amended agenda? Nope, that covers it, Mr. Chair. Okay, um, and I would say that um, uh, Councillor Andrew Knack from the City of Edmonton is joining us in the place of Councillor Walter, who is away today. And uh, Councillor Muckoff Swain uh, just got back into the airport and he is transitioning to his home he will join us in progress in the next just, little. He didn't think it would be very long. I just was able to sneak in right now. Um, good, sir. Uh, I'm here. A little delay with the airplane, but I'm here. Thank you. There we go. So then I would entertain. Uh, did you did you get, we had two additions to the agenda. You got that? You're okay? That, yep. Okay. Well, then I would entertain a motion to adopt the uh, agenda as amended. I'll make the Go ahead, Councillor Malkovsky. Yeah, I can make that for being late. I, I should make the first motion, so I'll, uh, I'll move that uh, that motion that uh, the July 14th, 2021 agenda as amended uh, be adopted. Great. I presume there's no discussion on the on the uh, motion. So with that, uh, we'll just entertain. Raise your hands. And uh, all those in favor? Approved. Thank you. So the next item of business is the approval of the minutes of May the 12th regular committee meeting. Um, had, did anybody notice any um, uh, changes or uh, edits that need to be made to the minutes? Seeing none, I would then entertain a motion for approval of the May the 12th HR compensation uh, and HR committee meeting. Mr. Broadhead, so moved. So moved. 
Any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, I would call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion has passed. Oh, okay, uh, the next item of business, uh, number three, update on the EMTSCHR function standup. I will turn it over to Mr. Jankowski. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'll run through a few items this afternoon, starting with an update on our talent acquisition activities. And I'm extremely happy to report that uh, this week we, uh, we had our second commission employee join the commission. And uh, Brian Bechtel is on the, the call with us here this afternoon. Brian has joined us as the new Director of Stakeholder Relations. And uh, Brian comes to us after a long and distinguished career in many different uh, um, social justice areas. Uh, Brian grew up in Edmonton and graduated from the University of Alberta. Um, and most recently, Brian worked for about five years as the executive director in community and social services with the government of Alberta, where he ran a policy research and data collection branch. He was also the, the executive director of the Alberta Interagency Council, uh, which was appointed by the minister to provide advice on housing and homelessness. But prior to that, Brian also was active in a number of different uh, not-for-profits and government policy uh, uh, initiatives. Brian lived and worked in Winnipeg from 1997 to 2007, where he worked for both the government of uh, Manitoba as well as the Uni United Way of Winnipeg. Uh, and uh, earlier than that in his career, Brian was the executive director for two nonprofits, uh, uh, including the Edmonton Social Planning Council and the executive director for the Food Bank, the Edmonton Food Bank in its early days. Uh, Brian has always had an interest in public policy. Uh, he's all, always been a professional leader in the administration of public service uh, initiatives, and uh, he served in a number of other capacities on a number of boards, including the U of A Board of Governors, the Capital Health Authority Board of Directors, as well as serving on the Legal Aid Society of Alberta. So Brian's joining us after a, a distinguished uh, career. Brian will be responsible for many of the communications functions uh, that, uh, that the commission gets engaged in during this buildup and ultimately at a state of maturity. Brian is going to be responsible most immediately in developing the stakeholders, uh, furthering the stakeholders, uh, the relationships between the stakeholders that affect this particular commission, most notably the eight current municipalities, as well as some of the other municipalities that might be seeking to join the organization as we, we uh, grow and mature. Brian has a strong network at the province as, uh, as evidenced by his past experience there. Um, and most immediately, Brian's going to be overseeing the work of Berlin on the public engagement and uh, brand identity development work that is that uh, the board heard about a number of months, two months ago, uh, and uh, we'll be hearing about uh, over the coming weeks uh, in, in the forms of an update that we intend to bring forward to the board meeting uh, shortly. So Brian's gonna be overseeing that work. Uh, he's gonna be involved in, in ongoing issues management. And perhaps I can just ask Brian to uh, just uh, introduce himself. And if, it's, uh, if you're okay with that, Mr. Chair, just to say a couple of uh, introductory words. And if he's not having a bad hair day, I'd like him to turn his camera on so we can get a look at his chops. <laughs> okay, I, it, it's not a bad day. I, sorry about that. I haven't quite got uh, got that. I'll, I'll work on that, but maybe I'll just make a comment. Um, sorry, I just, I'm not on my. I'll, I'll just have to work on that. I'll, I'll make a comment for now. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I, I'm really thrilled to to be here, uh, folks, with you and. This is a really exciting opportunity to be on the, on the ground floor of something. And some of the things that are, I, as we, for the first week, I've been reminded of another job that I have that, uh, that Paul didn't, uh, didn't have mentioned, but I worked in, uh, in the municipal area with, uh, I used to run the Sturgeon Foundation, which so many of you, I think Councillor Broadhead, you would be very familiar with that. I was there when they opened up Northridge Lodge up on the, up on the hill there. So I've, uh, I, 
I had uh, four or five years of uh, working in the Sturgeon area there. So this is starting to feel some familiar, but I'm really excited. Thank you, Paul, for the introduction. And I look forward to working with all of you. Well, I would welcome, welcome you, Brian. Um, we, you're in on the ground floor of a truly exciting opportunity to help us um, stand this commission up. Uh, we're all, as elected officials, very committed to seeing this thing go. And it's good to have Paul uh, feeling that he's not working all alone by his, by his lonesome self in the office. So we're glad we're getting to the end of the COVID. Uh, pandemic and uh, the opportunity to start working together on this important endeavor. So welcome. Thank you very much. And good to see you. And uh, it worked good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess that's not a bad hair day. We'll go with that one. Okay. okay. We, we don't have any fun in this uh, on this committee at all. I got to tell you, it's total serious. That's, uh, that's good to know. All right. Okay, back to you, Mr. Jankowski. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The one thing I've realized working with Brian over the course of the last couple of days is that he's got very good hair. Um, sometimes I'm envious. So. <laughs> well, so, yeah, it's a. It's still my. I still haven't got my post-COVID haircut, but I'll get there. All right. So moving on then, um, the uh, the other person that uh, I'm very happy will be joining us effective next Monday is the new executive assistant that will be assisting the senior leadership team, assisting both myself and Brian and the others that will be joining us shortly, but also working very closely with the board. And uh, um, next week, uh, Agata Lewandowski is going to be joining us. Agata has had uh, many years of experience supporting numerous boards including the Edmonton Municipal Region, uh, Edmonton Regional Municipal Board, uh, as well as working in the provincial government uh, as an EA to uh, the ADM level in a number of ministries. So she comes to us with a long distinguished public sector career. Uh, most recently, Agatha has been the uh, the EA to the board for the University Hospital Foundation, and uh, she will be joining us on, on Monday, so very excited to greet her and to welcome her to, uh, to the endeavor here, and she will be instrumental in terms of helping us get our new offices set up uh, and uh, developing some of the processes to help support the organization as it moves forward. The last update that I will also provide is that you may have seen on a number of the uh, sort of public sector job boards uh, out there this this week. Uh, uh, so, for example, on on the municipal world job board, on the uh, GFOA government finance officers. Uh, uh, Association of Alberta Job Board. Uh, we are also advertising the new what I what I term the CFO position, but it's at, it's titled the Director of Financial Services. And what we have done in terms of that particular position is we've grouped in all of the financial support functions. And support is is kind of a funny word when you're talking about developing an organization such as ours. Uh, one thing we've stressed throughout the job description is that this person is going to be instrumental in building all of the processes and building all of the budgets and the financial frameworks for this corporation. While we've had great support from, uh, from uh, Deborah Johnson in terms of the, the acting as a consultant controller for the organization, and meeting the financial needs. Uh, we are we're looking to get a top-notch financial administrator in place to help build the financial capacity of this organization to move forward. That role will also be responsible for the oversight of the risk management function of the corporation, as well as the procurement functions for the corporation. So really looking forward to, uh, uh, to getting that, uh, that recruitment completed. Uh, the, the job ads right now are stipulating a three-week uh, period during which we're seeking candidates' uh, expressions of interests, and uh, I hope to be able to uh, announce to a future meeting of this committee or a meeting of the board that uh, late this summer we hope to have somebody on board uh, and starting with us as the Director of Financial Services. This is probably a, a point at which to stop and see if there are any questions I can help answer. Uh, gentlemen, any questions of our uh, chief executive officer concerning the talent acquisition process that he's embarked on? 
I, I see no questions, Mr. Jankowski. Uh, you can continue on. Thank, Thank you. you. So it, the next area that I just wanted to assure the board that we haven't uh, we haven't sort of deviated from the original work plan is that there's ongoing work that uh, both Karen and Brittany are instrumental in in terms of helping us shape the the administrative policies that will uh, guide the activities of our employee group uh, as we we start to develop and reach a state of, of uh, or evolve, evolve into a state of maturity. Um, there are numerous operational human resources and compensation policies that are under development now. I've got a list of approximately 25, but generally they fall into the, the, uh, the categories of those policies that are sort of legislation driven or legislation related uh, employment policies, those that relate to the legislation that's prescribed at, at largely the provincial level and that uh, require an organization such as ourselves to put in place the, 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 um, the, the policies that will govern the conduct of not only the employees, but also the organization relative to those employees. There's also a, a, a category of policies that relate to ensuring worker safety as we start getting more and more uh, employees into our organization. And those, those are the, the general buckets of policies that we're working on. The board has approved uh, five key pieces of policy, board approved policy. These policies that we're working on now are administrative in nature and our, our intent is to develop these policies, put them in place, and uh, these policies will govern the conduct of the corporation and the conduct of the employees of the, the and I keep saying corporation, the commission as we move forward. So. Unless there are further questions on the policy development uh, initiatives, I would be happy to move on. Gentlemen, any questions of Mr. Jankowski relative to where we are with policies? Uh, I do have one question if nobody else does. Um, so Mr. Jankowski, so, so we will have um, board related policies that ultimately we approve in a duly uh, remaining context. And then there are other administrative and these are ones that you're saying that you will put in place and ultimately then we'll, we'll basically will receive those as information as to uh, how the administrative context is evolving with the organization. Is that correct? Yeah, what, what I can certainly do is I can uh, commit to bringing forward a list of those policies that have been adopted. Um, we have sought board approval for those critical policies that we we believed and, and that were discussed earlier with the board that required higher level board approval. Um, but I, I can certainly bring forward as we, we develop a compendium of administrative policies, we can bring forward a list of those policies that have been enacted, have been put in place to govern the administration. Um, it wasn't my intent to bring forward those policies in detail and to, to uh, engage the board in a discussion of those. The, the ones that did require board approval are the ones that we've brought forward and, and that the board has considered in the past. And those include the fraud and whistleblower protection policy, the employee code of conduct policy, the respect in the workplace policy, the conflict of interest policy, as well as the diversity and inclusion policy. And those are higher level policies that really demanded the board's attention and the board's approval. Now we're, we're working on those policies that are more, as I said, more administrative in nature. And, and I can bring forward an update on how we've progressed in terms of implementing those policies, uh, but it wouldn't be my intent to uh, engage the, the board in a discussion of those in, in detail. No, and I think we're all quite familiar as elected officials that there is the, there's the governance related policies and then there's the operational policies. Um, I would imagine they'll have a number of procedures associated uh, to, to, to backstop those administrative uh, directives that you're going to be putting in place? Is that a exactly. correct understanding? Exactly. And, and if I can offer one other sort of commentary on that, we're working very closely with the, the eight member municipalities as we start developing these administrative policies. Our intent is to, to take the 
kind of the best practices and to emulate what are the policies that are in place at the municipal level uh, across the eight municipalities that are members. Um, most of these are fairly common for public sector authorities like ours, uh, be they in the municipal sector or the, the provincial sector or, or even the, uh, the, the regional service commission sector. So, you, you know, there, there are eight municipalities, there are some 60, 60 some provincial regional service commissions, and we're, we're taking uh, sort of a, 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 an approach where we do an environmental scan, we see what's out there, and then we adopt what's most fitting for this particular commission. Well, and that's that's uh, really going to, you know, because of the red tape reduction uh, legislation that was passed a year or so ago, ultimately all commissions and boards have had to go, go through this similar kind of process. So uh, the bylaws and the policies and all that good stuff, as, as we're all aware in other uh, in other pursuits. Um, if there are no, are there any questions of Mr. Jankowski relative to, to that? Okay, if that's the case, then I guess uh, the next item of business would be to entertain a motion to accept his information in these reports. We've got, I've got, I'm sorry, Chair, I've got one, one other category that I just thought it would be important for the, uh, the committee to hear about. Um, I know in the past, the committee has heard about our, the work that we've uh, uh, engaged in and the, the committee and the board actually approved the direction that was set out with regards to the benefit and pension plan. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy to report that uh, we now have agreements with both the, and I, I always get the, uh, the, <laughs> the acronyms. Um, we both have a, we, we have an agreement in place with LAP uh, for the pension plan and with the AUMA for the benefit plan. Um, the, these are plans that are used in all of your municipalities. Uh, and we now have agreements with those entities to deliver or to, to uh, organize the pension uh, requirements associated with our employee group under the LAP plan. Every employee of the commission will be covered by that LAP pension plan. Uh, and similarly, under the agreement that we've entered into with the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association with regards to that common benefit plan, uh, those, those plans are now in place. They are integrated now with a payroll software processing uh, or payroll processing software that we have implemented. Um, we've sought out a, a cost-effective payroll uh, processing software. We've put that in place. It's now allowing us to pay our, our employees and, and effectively do all those calculations of uh, appropriate contributions on both the part of the commission and the part of the employees into these, uh, these, these uh, um, plans, this pension plan and the benefit plan. And so all of that is now starting to work tickety-boo. Again, thanks to the hard work of Brittany Bryce and Karen Marner, uh, as well as Deborah Johnson, who have been instrumental in, in making sure that these vital process pieces and process tools get put in place. So I just wanted to make sure that the committee was aware of, of the good work that has taken place in that regard. Good to see. Any questions, gentlemen, of uh, Mr. Jankowski? Seeing none, then I guess we would then entertain a motion to receive the uh, information uh, update for uh, Councillor Knack. You would like to put that on the floor? Sure, yeah, uh, and I'll read it out that the committee accepts as information the materials and discussion as presented during the HR function stand up update. Any questions, uh, any observations concerning where we are in those two areas? If not, then I would call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. So, uh, the next item of business was uh, Councillor uh, Broadhead. You wanted to uh, talk about the future of our meeting structure. I turn it over to you. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so at the request of the committee, uh, sent out a, uh, an email uh, about uh, three or four weeks ago, uh, sort of uh, just polling the, the, the board at, as to whether or not we would like to meet in public, return to in public or in-person meetings. And the idea was, is that we would all meet down at uh, the uh, World Trade Center uh, where the commission is located. And then we would uh, 
uh, live stream that uh, on YouTube as we do this virtual meeting. Uh, Mr. Jankowski uh, did some work in relation to uh, uh, the feasibility of such. And uh, I'll let uh, Paul, why don't you just describe the, the state of the technical affairs there and then we can have a discussion about whether we continue on Zoom or, or how we want to proceed. Absolutely. Breaking news, and that's why you're seeing this uh, in the item. So, what we've, uh, we've tried to do is look at the technology that we might be able to use, first of all, for conducting an in person meeting and delivering or, or live streaming that, uh, but more significantly to the, to the, the point in discussion here. What we've also looked at is whether we can effectively carry out a mixed meeting. And, and I use the term a hybrid meeting, which would allow for some in-person participation and some Zoom participation. And let me address those in order. So as far as the, the complete in-person meeting, the, uh, the challenge for us is that we can very readily in the largest boardroom here that's available to us at the Edmonton Board of Trade, um, we can very readily accommodate the, the, uh, the members of the board um, and we can achieve physical spacing for the members of the board. The challenge comes in when we start using the video technology to live stream in order for us to use the camera technology that's already incorporated in here in the room, we effectively have to, to, to get closer together to be able to capture everybody on camera. Um, so that is the challenge number one with regards to an in-person meeting. We would be sacrificing at this point the, uh, the, the physical distancing that we've all become accustomed to. So where we, where we wanted to achieve originally a six foot spacing or a two meter spacing between the participants gathered around the conference table in order to be able to live stream it using the technology that's in place, we end up having to push people closer together. Now, if the committee is comfortable with that, if the board is comfortable with that, um, that is an option that's available to us. If I can move just sort of quickly onto the discussion about a hybrid type meeting where participants could be either uh, located in person in the boardroom or joining the meeting using Zoom technology. That's where based on our pilot that we ran yesterday or our, our, our beta testing that we ran yesterday, um, in addition to the challenge of having potential reduced spacing within the room, um, we, we ran into the challenges of uh, moving between technologies, moving between functions. It became very difficult for me to guarantee that uh, moving from presentation in camp, moving from a presentation that's located on the screen in the conference room and also properly displayed in on camera in the Zoom technology, um, it, it just, we, we ended up having a number of drops and a number of restarts were required uh, in order to, uh, to, to try to accommodate a hybrid type of approach. So we're at a point where for next week, it's simply premature for me to, to guarantee that we would have all those technological bugs ironed out. This is no slight on Haley, Richie, and, and Samantha Kelman that have been involved in trying to put this in place. Uh, it, it's simply that with the combination of the technology, the camera technology and the screen technology that's in the room, uh, as well as the some potential part of live streaming all of this, whether it's in camera or, or in public session, and being able to move back between. I'm afraid that we, if we, if we attempt this next week, we run a strong risk of, of having a situation where the technology forces us to restart or uh, does not allow for a smooth progression of that meeting. We are, and Brian's instrumental in this, Brian's actually talking to a number of your municipalities uh, around the table that 
are starting to move towards having this kind of hybrid technology in place for conducting of council meetings, for example. Um, now, many of your municipalities have more advanced technology in place than what we have at our disposal here at the Edmonton Board of Trade Building. And in the fullness of time, we may be able to move to that kind of technology. That is what we're looking at. We're also going to explore, quite frankly, the ability to perhaps use some of the technology that is in place in your council's chambers. And although we, we haven't gone to the length of actually presenting that as a proposal, that's something we're starting to look and starting to discuss with your respective clerk's offices, for example. We are aware, though, that a number of the, the council, uh, council chambers are space constrained. They're, most councils, I think, are limited right now to seven members, and we have eight members on the board. Uh, and so th those are some of the, the logistical challenges we're also starting to, uh, to look at. So uh, in summary, what I'd like to suggest is that uh, for next week, we could move to an in-person type meeting at, with a live stream of that. It would involve having to um, get a little closer than what we had all kind of become accustomed to in terms of the, the two meter spacing, but it is doable in that room. We can also revert back to a complete Zoom meeting. Uh, both of those, we have a high degree of confidence that we could accomplish from a technical standpoint without any missteps. It is the hybrid solution that uh, I, I'm loath to recommend for next week's meeting. I just think that it's premature and I wanted the, the committee to be aware of those complications. I know we had originally tried to get to a point where we could carry out that kind of hybrid meeting next week. I can recommend at this point that there, there's any risks falling through the cracks and, and us ending up in a less than optimal experience, not only for, for our viewers, but also for yourselves. So I guess this is a broader conversation. And so, Mr. Chair, um, I open it to the floor in relation to commentary about uh, next steps. Uh, I personally am fine with moving to in-person meeting. I've had a couple of committee meetings in other organizations that have been in-person and uh, they work quite well. Uh, so I, I open it, um, Mr. Chairman, and I refer to you and, and the rest of the board. Uh, thank you in that regard. So I sent out the email and I, I, I must admit, I only received six email returns. So, uh, and those six email returns all indicated uh, that they would be fine with, uh, with getting back in person. Although I, you know, uh, the options of, uh, attending virtually via Zoom would have, would have just provided a, uh, a facilitator for those who perhaps couldn't on that particular day make the trip downtown Edmonton. I did not receive two uh, responses. So hence the conversation today. Um, I, I personally don't, would like to actually get together in person. I think uh, it's been 16 months since we've had that opportunity to do that. And, uh, one of the benefits of, of gathering uh, in person is just the, uh, the synergies that come from working together around the, the board table. Uh, Zoom is a wonderful technology, but it lacks in that ability to, uh, to generate the relationships that carry us through some of the difficult uh, conversations that we are going to have and have had in the past. But uh, whether it happens next Thursday or whether it happens in October, uh, in August, uh, I guess is open to debate. Um, perhaps a month would give, uh, you know, our CEO an opportunity to work through the, uh, um, you know, the technical uh, challenges of that particular room or to find a different uh, boardroom that would allow this to work more seamlessly. Uh, so, when, when Paul and I talked about it, I thought that it would be best to bring it here so we could have a, a conversation in advance of the board uh, because otherwise it's gonna be a conversation by email. And uh, so, Sam, what, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, so uh, th thanks, Wes. And you know, uh, I too would like to get back in person, but I, I understand that the challenges of technology, right? We, we need to make sure that we're 
we're open in, in, in streaming this um, for, for other individuals who may want to tune in, right? So I, I get the challenges. Um, my gut is giving the, giving the group a, a month to be able to figure that out um, uh, instead of trying to rush it just to, to get back in person. I'd love to be there in person. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we've all seen this in, in, in the workplace here yeah, of trying to figure out how to, how to have a, a camera set up so that you can stream the, stream the, uh, the meeting uh, as well as show some content on the screen, et cetera. So um, yeah, my, my gut is we give them uh, the, the month to figure it out, um, try some stuff. And, and if that boardroom's not gonna work then look at other uh, scenarios. So that, that would be my, 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 uh, my two cents. Andrew? Uh, I'll keep it quick. I agree with Sam. Okay. Uh, well, with, with the concurrence of the board, then, uh, or this committee, I'll just send out to the board that uh, we're given the, uh, the uh, technical uh, issues. Or, or Gord, maybe <laughs> comment before I say anything. <laughs> well, just, just a question. Is a month going to give administration enough time to work through those details? Um, if it will give you, I totally agree with what Councillor Muckoff Swain was saying and Councillor Nack agrees with. Um, if the month will buy you time, then, then that's great. We can continue on. Uh, this has worked well for us at the committee level, and I would imagine the board would probably be just as well. It's been a while since, when, when did we have our last board meeting? Uh, Retort. Uh, last time. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'm okay with it. So the question is, will a month give you enough time, uh, Mr. Jankowski? So it, it, we can certainly endeavor to uh, see if there are other solutions that we can put in place. Um, if we end up having to procure new technology to make this happen, a month won't be enough time. Um, so I, I think it really depends on what we find out in some of the discussions that we have. Potential to uh, partner with one of the municipalities and conduct a meeting at one of those locations. Uh, I think the, the the challenge for us here is that a month from now we're probably still, if if we limit ourselves to the current technology, we're probably still going to be at a point where it's going to have to be one or the other. So, uh, in order to procure new technology, particularly in partnership with the uh, the Edmonton Board of Trade, who are the owners of the technology that's here, uh, we, we're probably going to require a more than a month. We have looked at other locations and the challenges at some of the commercially available locations are not significantly different. So when we started to look at co conference space and getting the technology to work in, in, uh, in, in ho hotel conference centers, for example, the, the technical challenges were, were still very much the same. Uh, so if, if, we, if we can endeavor, if I could implore for the committee to consider perhaps a September date uh, as, as being uh, an appropriate date, um, that, that would give us more chance, more time to ensure that we can find a proper technical solution. And I think that's reasonable. Thanks for that response, Mr. Jankowski. Uh, the city of Fort Saskatchewan has embarked on upgrading our technology in our council chambers um, pretty much into the first quarter following the start of the COVID. And we're just in the middle of that process right now. So it's not, it's not a short and easy process. The technology, I think, needs to be well integrated so that it does work well, so that we can accommodate members who are not in attendance, but want to be in attendance, not in the room. Uh, and uh, still allow us, as Councillor Muckoff Swain had talked about, um, being able to ensure that we get public disclosure and public, um, you know, exposure for our uh, for our meetings, which which ultimately is one of our objectives. So, uh, on that basis, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I leave it to your discretion because it ultimately comes back to how you're going to control the board meetings going forward. So, I leave it. To, uh, in your hands at this point uh, as to where we should go. If I can just interject, um, Mr. Chair, the, okay. the other uh, area where I know Brian has reached out is to some of our sister uh, organizations. So for example, 
the EMRB we suspect is going to be facing a similar challenge. Uh, we're, we're not the only organization that is going to be considering this, I would submit. So uh, giving us a couple of months to, to work with some of those agencies, perhaps there is a, an opportunity to even cost share on a technical solution. Uh, th those are some of the things that we're, we're just starting to, uh, to reach out and, and think about, given the fact that as of yesterday, we ran into these technical glitches when we tried to implement the solution that we thought was feasible here. That said, Mr. Chairman, uh, do, you, do we need a motion to this effect or just turn it over to our administration to continue on as they had just updated us today? Yeah, I don't know that we need a motion. Uh, I'll just send out a, uh, an email to uh, the board indicating the, the difficulties and uh, the, the two month sort of uh, uh, pause in returning to in-person meetings. Uh, we're going to facilitate a, an in-person uh, board uh, celebratory event sometime in September in any case, and uh, that will provide an opportunity of our, for us to meet uh, and engage uh, socially. So uh, maybe that should be our first in-person meeting now that I contemplated in any case. Uh, is that, does that resonate with you, uh, Councillor Malkoff swain or Councillor Nack? Does that work? Yeah, that, that's good with, with me. I, I think, you know, I, I take um, uh, Mr. Jankowski's point around uh, other boards are looking at this, every organization is looking at this, so let, let's see if we can find out. But ultimately, um, you know, I wouldn't want to extend it any further. I think September, let's just get in a room and, and figure out the technology. And if it's bumpy, then we'll, we'll write it out. And if people can't make it, then, um, you know, the same as 24 months ago, if you can't make it, you can't make it. So. Um, my gut is, uh, let, let's give them a couple of months and, and then let's get going. Perfect. Uh, with the direction of the committee, then uh, I'll just send out an email to the board indicating that that will be uh, uh, the case. That, that is super. And I think we've concluded that matter. Yep. Uh, any other comments? Uh, I just want to thank the, the committee for its indulgence in this matter. I, I appreciate that it's, it's a desire that we all have uh, to get back into a group setting and in-person meetings. I, I, I appreciate that uh, the board, the committee is giving us this, uh, this opportunity to make sure we get it right. That sounds good to, I think, all of us. So uh, you have your directions and your marching orders. So we'll leave that with you and... Uh communicate in due course. So that's, that's great. Um, so I guess we have one last item, which is to move into in camera to discuss an item uh, that is uh, protected under the FOIP legislation. So I'd entertain a motion to move in camera. Uh, Councillor Broadhead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, I received the, the motion. So this is uh, this is good. Motion to, uh, I move that uh, the committee move in camera to discuss a matter under sections 16, 23, 24, and 25 of the Freedom of Information and Production of Privacy Act. Great. Did we jump ahead? Did we pass the motion? You yeah, have to, forgive me, to receive the, the last uh, information updates for information. Do we do that? I miss that. No, I said not. Okay, good. So we've, we've done that. Great. Thank you. So this is a motion to move in camera. All those uh, in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So we will uh, move into in camera and uh, we will stop the live stream. And uh, uh, Brittany will uh, let us know when we are we going to move into another room or do we stay here? Yes, I will move everyone here unless you'd like to keep anyone out of the breakout room uh, into it. And I will uh, just ask that when you're, you're completed your discussions in camera that you all select the, the leave breakout room button, not the leave meeting room when you're done and you'll rejoin the main session. So just hang tight and I will move everyone into a breakout room. And Mr. Jankowski, do you want anybody to be in attendance at that in our in camera, just yourself and the
I think you may be on mute, uh, Councillor Harris. I was. Oh. Uh, anyways, we all got safely back from our in-camera <laughs> discussion, and uh, I think we're now at the point that our business is concluded. Uh, if there are no other items of business before the committee, then I would suggest uh, the meeting will adjourn at uh, 5 11 p.m. See you guys. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Councillor Muckoff Swain. And gentlemen, we'll see you next week. Thank gotcha. you.